Hey guys, this is going to be a different video. Um, as you probably know, um, as we're building a community here of families who desire to adopt and who are fostering, some who have already fostered, that it's really important um, to talk about the behind the scenes and, you know, the realness of the adoption and the foster care process. And so I made this video a while back, just sharing our husband's final decision to start foster care. So if you haven't watched that, make sure you check that out after you watch this video. But there really hasn't been a lot going on. And so I haven't really shared any updates. Um, and so this is going to be kind of an update video. And I also want to share uh, something really personal with you, uh, with our journey. And so in the video that I posted last year, I talked about our husband, my husband and my husband and I's journey and how we finally decided to foster. So it was a lot of back and forth um, until we finally decided that foster would be the right, foster to adopt would be the right decision for our family. So it's now been over a year and we got our license. Yay, we got our license a few months ago. And so that's been really exciting. Um, it's been a long journey of going through classes with three children, um, trying to complete all the homework. And if you guys have gone through the foster care process, you know what that's like, going through all the things and the checklists and the trainings and the paperwork and all of it and the background check. So we finally got over the hump. We also had our home study. They came and saw our home and we are finally approved. Now, the one thing I do want to say is that we did have to switch agencies because what happened with our first agency, which we, we really love the people there. What happened was that um, after we finished our classes with them, six months later, we heard nothing from them. Nothing, absolutely nothing. So we got our we were done with our classes in July and then December came around and we had heard nothing. And so I contacted the kiss worker and I said, what is going on? We've heard nothing like we've been licensed. We've been done with our training. For six months, you said we were going to get our license within two months. What's going on? And so the kids worker let me know that their agency had gone through a lot of um, staff shortages and people left. And so they just were not able to get to the paperwork. And so I just thought, man, it would have been great if you told us. <laughs> We've been just waiting, thinking that there was something wrong and we didn't know that all this was going on. So anyway, my husband and I decided to choose a different agency. And so we transferred all, all of our paperwork over to a new agency. Within a few weeks, we got our license and now we're ready to go. So what I want to share with you guys about this process is, um, you know, I know that there are a lot of you out there who are considering fostering and I know it can be daunting. Um, I'm actually one of those rare birds who, you know, for years and years, I've actually really desired to have teenagers in my home. Um, even before I met my husband, I wanted to help kids in foster care. That's why I went to law school and I'll share more of that story later in a different video. But I've always wanted to help kids in foster care and never really saw, really, never really had a hesitation about it. It just felt really natural. Like it's something that I want to do. I want them in my home. I want to help them. And I'm okay if they leave my home as long as I have, you know, um, just a few moments with them to instill God in them, to just love on them. I was okay with that. But uh, it took my husband quite a few years to get to that. So, um, so now we're here. So now that we got our license, I'm so excited. Like, yeah, we're finally here. We're going to be foster parents. I've been waiting for so long. But I was surprised to find out that then I started getting really nervous. You know, even though we've done so many trainings and I've worked in juvenile court for so many years and I literally know the system like the back of my hand and how this works still. Now that it's here, the reality is sinking in that, oh man, we are foster parents now. Like we can actually have a foster child in our home. What is that really going to look like, right? Because there's there's a difference between, you know, thinking about how something is going to look like and waiting, being exciting, excited for it and for it to actually happen. And so we finally finished um, the room for our foster kiddo that we hope to have here soon and we had to move all our, so we have three boys. We had to move all of them into one room. <laughs> so they're sharing a room and our boys have been so gracious and, um, you know, they, they're just now excited to have, um, another child here, but it took a while to really talk to our children and to, 
um, get them to understand that this is part of our family's calling, you know? And so anyway, that's a whole nother video. But so our, we moved our boys and we finally got the room ready. And so um, yesterday, actually, as I was, you know, walking to my room, I stopped by that room and I, all these feelings that I've had that I haven't really known what was going on, I just sat with the Lord and, you know, knelt before the bed and just started praying, um, God, I know so much in my head and I can like tell people how to do things, you know, and I love helping people understand how the process works, but it's a whole nother thing, um, to actually have a foster child in your home, right? It's one thing for me to be a caseworker, um, for me to be the attorney for the child, for me to be the attorney for the parents and to be on the legal side of things. It's a whole nother thing to actually have a child in my home and being the foster parent. Um, and so it's just a, it's a very different, um, feeling. It's a, it's a different side of the foster care system that I haven't experienced before. And so I think that's what was making me nervous. And so, um, yeah, I just want to share that with you guys that it's, it's okay to feel nervous, even whether you feel prepared or you feel completely unprepared, like you don't even know what you're doing or you don't feel like you know what you're doing. At the end of the day, what I keep reminding myself of is, you know, when I had my very first son, Judah, he's now 11. I literally, guys, I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> I mean, I, I had never babysat. So I was really never around little kids, you know, like I literally had no clue how to be a mom. And I keep reminding myself that, man, God's got me through my first one. And now I have three that are still alive <laughs> and thriving. So surely, surely he's going to help us with caring for somebody else's child that we get to just love on and call our own for a few months, for a few years or whatever plan God has for that kiddo. Um, and so I just wanted to share that with you guys because I think sharing the emotional side and the ups and downs of the journey is really important because it's a real thing. So if you are in the place right now where you're thinking about fostering, but you're feeling those feelings like, oh man, what is it going to actually be like to have a kid in my home? And what if this goes wrong? And what if that goes wrong? Believe me, I have all of those questions. Like, what if I need my caseworker? Because my kid is having some behavior that I can't remember <laughs> from all the trainings that we took. I don't know what to do. And I can't find the page in my in my computer or on the training book. And I call my caseworker and they're not available. What am I going to do? I literally had that thought. Like, what do I do if I can't call my caseworker? What if I do if I don't know what to do? <laughs> like, what do we do? Um, and... That's when I went to the room last night and just knelt before the Lord. I just remembered, okay, I have the Holy Spirit who is my ever-present help in time of need. And I am not going to know how to do everything. Just like I didn't know what to do when I brought my first son home and I learned. And so it's just a learning thing. So if that's you and you are feeling like, oh man, even though I feel like I have as much knowledge as I could possibly have to do this, um, but I still feel unprepared somehow, it's okay. You know, it's normal. And, you know, what the other thing I found over the years is that kids don't really need me to be a genius. My boys ask me all kinds of questions that I have no clue about, <laughs> especially with trucks and cars and things. I'm like, I have no idea, right? They don't care that I don't know that stuff. You know, they just care that I'm here. And that they can depend on me and that I love them and that I'm just here. My presence is what matters. And so I think at the end of the day, um, it's the same thing with fostering. It's our presence. It's our willingness to show up every day and to be there. Yes, we need to be prepared. Yes, we need to know um, how to deal with different behaviors and how to see the child and how to empathize and all of those things, that those skills that you learn. But what matters to that kid is that we're here and that we show up, you know, um, and so I just wanted to encourage you today. If you're there where you're feeling like, oh my gosh, I don't even know, like I want to do this, but I'm so scared. It's okay. You know, God is with us and he's going to help us. Um, so anyway, I hope that encourages you wherever you are in your journey. Um, I am promising myself to be more open with you guys about the behind the scenes and I will. Um, and so, yeah. Comment below. Let me know if you've ever um, felt <laughs> what I've been feeling these past few weeks, waiting for a call for a foster for our first foster child placement. Um, and I would love to hear your words of encouragement as well. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye bye.